this week's Technique Tuesday video, I'll demonstrate how to avoid holes or gaps at the underarms of top-down sweaters. Tap or mouse over your video playback screen to jump to a specific point in the video using the chapter links. You can slow down or increase the playback speed by clicking on the gear icon. So I'm knitting this top-down seamless sweater. It has a yoke construction, but the technique I'm going to show you can work with raglans or simultaneous set-in sleeve constructions as well. They all have this in common where once you get to the underarm, you separate the sleeve stitches from the rest of the body, and then you cast on some stitches at the underarm, and then you work the body down from there. Once the body is done, you come back and you need to pick up stitches along this cast on edge before you begin working the live stitches. And so then you can work it as a two. So the problem that you can get is that you can end up with holes at either end here in the fabric from where the, pick, the new stitches that you picked up uh, where the, those stitches are joining in with the existing live stitches. You can get a little hole here and a little hole here. So what I'm going to show you is how to pick up stitches and work them so that you don't get a hole um, at all. And uh, you just, you, you don't have to eliminate the hole because you are preventing it from the start. My instructions had me cast on six stitches in order to work the body in that direction, and now they want me to pick up six stitches. So they want me to have the same number of live stitches that I'm going to work in this direction that I had when I was working in that direction. I want to pick up actually more than six stitches. I want to pick up two stitches more than the number of stitches that I originally cast on. So I'm going to pick up eight stitches and then after I work that first round, I'm going to eliminate the extra stitches at those corners. So in order to do this, I need to first figure out where those six stitches actually are and be able to tell the difference between a strand of yarn and an actual cast on. So if I look at this, this is not uh, a cast on stitch. This, it's not a twisted loop. This is just an extended uh, lengthy loop that is attached to this column of stitches here. Here is my first cast on stitch. I can see I have a twisted loop. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six. Here's that last cast on stitch right here. I'm going to insert my needle through the center of the V of the stitch. The column of stitches that are coming out of this cast on stitch, they look like a column of Vs. I'm going to stick my needle right through the center of it. Then I'm going to turn the work in this direction because this is the direction that the edge has to be facing in order for me to pick up stitches. But when I look at it, in this direction, I'm not in the center of something that looks like a V at the edge. Um, because that the V that I was in is now upside down. But I do want to pick up through something that looks like a V, so I want to go a half a stitch to the right. So I want to go right here, right here. This is going to be my very first stitch. If we look at this right here as being as representing the cast on edge, these little twisted loops right here are the actual cast on stitches. And then these V's here represent each of the columns of stitches that grow out of those six cast on stitches. So we look at these stitches as, oh, here's the V of the stitch and here's the center of that stitch. So we wanna find the one that is furthest to the left right here, and we mark it. And when we turn it upside down, what we can see is that we are no longer in the center of a V, we're in the center of an upside down V. And we now only have five Vs instead of six. So we shift over to the right a half a stitch, and this is where we pick up our first stitch is right here. So then we get one, two, three, four, five, six, and then we go half stitch to uh, the left here and that's seven. 
And then our eighth one is actually in the fabric. So these two together really prevent uh, any gap uh, occurring at this end. Over here, we have a yarn tail that is attached to the work from when we first joined it. So if there's still any sort of a gap over here, we can use the attached yarn tail to close up that gap before we weave it in. So I have that needle through the edge. I'm just going to knit, knit it like a regular stitch. So I'm grabbing my yarn and I'm going to pull it through the fabric to create a stitch right here. And then I'm going to look for the next V of a stitch. It's right here. I'm going to wrap the yarn just like a regular stitch and pull it through. So I'm knitting through the edge. I'm going to do that until I have as many stitches on the needle as, as I originally cast on. So I have those six stitches. Now I'm going to go one more uh, to the left. So then here's my seventh one. And now the eighth one is going to be through the fabric. So you can see I have that one really kind of elongated strand right here. So I'm looking, so I've got a, a stitch in this column, in this column right here, all those V's. I'm looking at this column of stitches right here. And I'm going to put my needle through the top stitch right there and pull the yarn through like this. So now I've got my eight stitches on the needle. Okay, I'm approaching uh, that first cast on stitch here, which you can, you know, pull on. You can see that it gets, it's getting tighter. What I want to do is close the gap between that first pick up, picked up stitch and this last original live stitch. When I work the two stitches together using a knit two together, the stitch on the left ends up on top of the last original sleeve stitch. This yarn tail is going to continue to be loose, but because that one is on top and I can tighten it, I can help prevent any gap there, especially later on as I go weave in the yarn tails, I can control the tension on those two stitches right there. I've gotten rid of that extra stitch on the right edge and now I have the three stitches that I want or need for this span across the cast on edge. So I have these three. So now I have these four stitches here and I have to eliminate this fourth one. I tend to like to mirror things. So because I did a knit two together on that side, I'm going to I'll work the uh, two stitches, three stitches, and then I'm going to work um, this as an SSK. So this is that fourth or eighth picked up stitch, the first of the original sleeve stitches, and working them together as an SSK like that. And then that's going to prevent uh, the gaps for the most part. Later on, when I go weave in the yarn tail, again, I can control the tension of those first stitches. And if there is anything remaining, I can use it to help close up gaps at that edge. So this is the result of the underarm after I finished knitting it. I have not woven in the ends yet. This is where I joined the yarn right here. And you can see that you know, I can correct that tension there. And if I feel like there is still too much of a gap here, when I weave in my ends, I can use a technique called duplicate stitch to further connect this portion of the sweater to that original uh, portion right here in order to really lock those stitches in. So that's the stitch that the yarn tail is attached to. So I'm going to come over here. There's this little hole here. I'm going to bring my yarn needle up. And I'm going to come around this stitch here. I'm 
and then back down into that hole. Now I can come to the inside of the work. I can come around the backs of stitches, the pearl bumps, like this, and just kind of circle around any place that looks potentially like it could be a, a gap. Cinch it up if I need to. Check again on this side of the work to make sure everything looks good. And then I can just actually weave my yarn tail in. And I, I use reverse duplicate stitch in stockinette fabric. And so once I've woven in several stitches here, then I can uh, cut the yarn tail fairly close to the fabric. And by weaving in the ends in this way, when the fabric stretches, the yarn tail will stretch along with it. So there's less likelihood that the tail is going to pop through to the front. This video focused on preventing holes at the underarms. If you're new to techniques like picking up stitches or duplicate stitch, you may be interested in these videos over here. Links to these videos as well as other relevant techniques are down in the video description. If you have any comments or questions about this video or suggestions for videos you'd like to see in the future, you can leave those down in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.